All right, so we're at it again with the uh, the budget APRS setups, and today, uh, not only we're going to do the slideshow presentation, I'm going to walk you through the steps of creating your own iGate and Digipeter with just the Balfang, the RTL SDR kit, a Raspberry Pi, and an internet connection. So this has actually been uh, based off of a write-up from a um, November one Alpha Alpha Echo, uh, and this is from his mostly from his website at N1A. Uh, AE.com. So I want to go ahead and give credit to him. Uh, he made this write up, detailed the instructions, and uh, kind of put this out there. I'm just taking that and showing it to my community, my subscribers on YouTube, my new hams, and trying to reach people that, like me, learn a little bit more visually. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get into what we need to get this started. Uh, I'm going to show you guys just a layout of all the devices I have. It comes out to about $100 uh, at the most, depending on what you want to add to it and then we can go on and start setting the stuff up. All right, so we're gonna need a few things for this project, uh, and this is keeping it on the budget. So all we need first is the RTL SDR kit. So that comes with the antenna and the uh, SDR itself. So that right there is 30 bucks, all right? And next thing we're gonna need is a Raspberry Pi. I have the Model B. Um, Unfortunately, the uh, Pi Zero Wi-Fi does not come with the uh, audio jack, so I really recommend just getting the Raspberry Pi B. It's thirty dollars. Next thing we're going to need is a radio. So in this case, of course, I'm going cheap again. Uh, this is just a regular Baofeng. They run thirty to fifty dollars, depending on what model you're going to get. Um, and the last thing you're going to need is a audio interface cable. So this right here, simply. Uh, I just need something that will take audio from the Raspberry Pi, pump it into the Baofeng to transmit. I recommend the BTEC cable because it has uh, audio in and out so you can use it for other purposes. It also has a chip on it that will regulate voltage. But in the absence of that, all you need is this cable here. You also need a internet connection and a computer to set this up. So the one prerequisite to all of this is making sure that you have your Raspberry Pi with Raspberry and OS installed. I'm not going to go into a detailed uh, video description on how to install Raspberry. Uh, if you're watching this, I already hope you know how. If not, I will put a link in the description on how to install it. But just to get started, we're going to go ahead and connect it uh, with Ethernet. And we're going to go ahead and connect the power. And that way we can uh, SSH into it. Now there's a way to SSH into it right off the bat without ever hooking it in a monitor uh, and I will detail that real quickly just in case nobody knows. Basically whenever you install Raspberry OS you just need to make a file on the root drive called SSH without an extension and then uh, once you do that as soon as you plug it into Ethernet and turn it on you'll be able to access it from your network. Not going to go into detail but uh, just know that prerequisite is Raspberry OS is installed and you can access it over SSH. So let's go ahead and get into that. All right, so we're back on the computer and the first thing we're going to want to do is just go ahead and SSH into our Pi so we can start uh, setting that up. So I'm using PuTTY. I'm going to go ahead and open that connection. And I'm going to go ahead and log in. So I'm actually, where did my slideshow go? There we go. So I'm going to make that a little smaller and we'll bring this over and pull this down. And so we're logging in this Pi because that's I haven't changed the default uh, password yet. And we're going to use password Raspberry. This is stuff you guys should know at this point if you're if you're watching this video. So I'm going to do sudo raspi-config because this is the first time I've powered this thing on and what I'm doing now is I'm going to enable SSH for next time we reboot uh, that way we can always get back into our Pi. So I would think that it's under boot options it's not it's probably under advanced well let's go ahead and expand the file system uh, that's something that we need to do Anyways, interface options, that's where we need to be. And so we're going to go down the SSH and we're going to enable the SSH server. See, so both of those two things that I just did were uh, ease of life. Uh, this kind of makes it easier to reconnect to the Pi if we ever lose connection. 
So at this time the Pi is rebooting and we'll go ahead and switch over to our slides. So you have the budget, APRS, iGate, and DigiPeter. Build your own APRS, iGate, and DigiPeter without breaking the bank. So that's our goal. Next slide is what you need to know. So a DigiPeter listens for digital radio packets, receives them, and then repeats them over uh, an antenna system. That's simple enough. It gets a radio packet and then repeats it, usually from a, a vantage point or a higher power, so other stations can hear you that not, uh, not normally would. An iGate listens for digital radio packets and then forwards them to the internet to be forwarded uh, other iGates, uh, which can send packets to the proper recipient or uploaded to online services such as APRS.is. Uh, if you haven't seen that website, really cool, go check it out. As well as email servers and text message gateways. You can email and text message with APRS as long as you're in range of an iGate. Um, packets can also uh, come from the internet, from your, um, from the internet into your iGate and then be transmitted over RF and uh, throughout your local area. So if another station across the country wants to send a station around here, a APRS message, uh, it would go through the eye gate, come back over here through the internet, come out over RF, and then a station here would get it. So we already kind of covered what we need to do here. We need the RTL SDR kit. We need a radio capable of interfacing audio. We need the, uh, uh, a radio capable of transmitting and interfacing. We also need a computer or device capable of running Direwolf, which is a software TNC, uh, terminal node controller, which will handle all the radio packets. Um, and we're using a Raspberry Pi B in this case. And we also need a, well, very optional, but highly recommended is an outdoor antenna. Uh, for budget's sake, in this video, we're just gonna be using the stock stuff, but it's, uh, it would really benefit you to get an external antenna. Next slide. So how it all ties together. The RTL-SDR will be used to listen on the APR's frequency to receive packets. It's dedicated just for listening. Whenever, uh, which will be decoded by Direwolf on the computer. The computer will forward them to the internet and, or transmit them over the Baofeng, which that's our transmit side, to stations within transmit range creating both an iGate and a DigiPeter. This station can be used to send text messages to other stations as well as perform most of all APR's functions. Cool thing about this is you can set it up in a car too. Um, so next slide. So, all right. So now we're going to go ahead and start installing um, Direwolf on our Raspberry Pi. So the slides have this outlined exactly how as as you should do it. So you're just going to uh, copy paste each line into your Raspberry Pi one by one. And then you're going to reboot. So we'll go ahead and reboot. And it's going to take just a moment to get that back up. And we can right click our window, window and hit restart session. And if it comes up quick enough, we'll go ahead and just be able to re-log in and keep issuing the commands in order from top to bottom. So what this is doing is, is installing uh, Direwolf, which is a software that is going to handle all of our iGate and digipeating uh, packets. So we'll go ahead and log back in. So after we boot, we're going to go ahead and install the sound library. And that might just take a moment. And so next, after that, we're going to CD, squiggly line, which takes us to the root um, of our current user. And so the next step is the git clone direwolf. I've actually already done that, so you would just paste that in and hit enter. It does take uh, a minute or two to download. After that, we're going to CD into Direwolf, and then we are going to make. And that could take some time, so if it does, I'll skip to the end of it. All right, so once that's done, uh, the next thing we are going to run is sudo make install. So we'll just copy paste the pasta that in there. And then we will make install configuration. 
make install comp. It'll be in the PowerPoint. And then we are going to make install RPI, Raspberry Pi. So, Direwolf is now officially installed. Our next step is going to be configuring Direwolf on the Raspberry Pi. So, what we need to do is open up the direwolf.cunt file. So, we're going to use nano to do that. And it's going to pull up. Um, your text file for your configuration for direwolf. So there's a few things that we need to do here. The first thing is we need to find the uh, the line that says a device plug hardware zero zero as it is in the slide, and we are going to uncomment that. So you can use your arrow keys to navigate if you've never used this before. Um, and mine actually says uh, zero or one zero. There's a way for figuring this out, uh, but since we are using the um, the onboard uh, audio plug, the one straight into Raspberry Pi, we're going to change that one to a zero, and that should do us. Um, so we're going to go on to the next step. So just uncomment that and make sure it's zero comma zero as it is in the video. I know it might be a little hard to see. So the next thing is we're going to replace uh, no call with your call sign on the line that says uh, my call. So we need to find that line. I'm sure I'll skip over it a few times. Oh, right here. So this right here is going to be your call sign. So I'm going to put KN4 MKB. And so the next thing is going to be enable uh, your beacon, which is going to be what uh, pretty much uh, advertises your station, both through the I gate and over RF. And um, so it's a, it starts with a P beacon line. And if we keep going down, we should see that. here. So this right here can get a little uh, a little complicated if you've never seen it before. So I'm going to put it up top here so we can see the whole line. Um, so I'm going to go to the beginning of that first P beacon line and we're going we're gonna to step through this and I'll show you guys exactly how you should have this set up. So you can mostly leave this stuff as is uh, but there's a few things you might want to change and that's going to be the latitude position and your longitude position. Uh, the next thing is how much power you're broadcasting at. So I'm not broadcasting at 50 watts, I'm actually only at 5 watts because I'm using an HT. Your height is the altitude off the ground that your antenna is placed. Your gain is obviously the gain of your antenna and the comment is the comment that you would like to be advertised uh, when you your beacon um, comes out every 30 minutes as it's set right now. So for my comment I'm gonna put uh, KN uh, Richmond Kentucky I gate uh, because I live in Richmond Kentucky that way if somebody's traveling down the road here and they see my beacon come out over RF they'll think okay so there's an I gate in Richmond Kentucky you can also put radio frequencies you're listening on here. You can put different information that you'd like to be advertised out. So I'm going to show you guys real quick how to get your latitude and longitude. So there is a website called latlonge.net, L-A-T-L-O-N-G.net, as you can see here on the screen. Uh, and it will give you your latitude and longitude with the place that you select. So for the latitude, I'm going to go ahead and just take all of this out and I'm going to write 37.781 and for the longitude I'm going to take all of that out 
and write negative 84 dot 321. So that should set our latitude longitude for our beacon, which will also be the location that is set up on APRS.IS when we check that out. So um, that will be the way that you get your latitude and longitude. So the next thing is we want to uh, go ahead and enable the digipeter. So that way packets that come in will automatically be uh, transmitted out. So we are looking for uh, the digipeat line. So we'll go ahead and look for that. Oh, so this right here is what that looks like. And that's simple. We just backspace. Awesome. So now we're to save the file. If you've never used nano, you hold in shift X. Oops. No, it's control X and then shift Y and then enter. And that will save our configuration file. Uh, but actually we're, we weren't done with it. So I'm going to hit the up arrow to bring that back and reopen it with nano. <laughs> and there's actually uh, a few more things that we need to configure in order to uh, get it running the way that we want it to run. So the next thing we're going to find is uh, where it says IG server. So this right here is what is going to enable pretty much our internet gateway uh, packets going back and forth. So we need to find that IG server line uh, and it might be near the bottom. Internet gateway, that's where it's under. So here it is. We'll go ahead and backspace that so that it'll enable that. And then uh, the next thing we need to do is get our um, passcode. So in order to report data to APRS.FI and the internet gateway, you have to have a special password. So there's a link in the PowerPoint, and you can see it here. Uh, you need to set up a gateway here. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up and so this is the way it works. You put in your call sign, you hit get passcode, it will give you the passcode. All right. So you will write a line under or wherever you like um, and it goes as follows. IG login and then you're going to do your call sign. K, so I'm doing KN4MKB. Now I'm going to put dash 7, sorry, so I'm going to put KN4MKB dash 0, and then I'm going to write my passcode after that. Obviously, I don't want you guys to see my passcode, so I'm going to bring this down where you can't see it. going to drag this off so you guys don't see me generate it and I am good to go there so the next thing that we need to do is we're going to find that uh, the line uh, another P beacon and it says send to IG so this is this is the beacon that goes to uh, the internet gateway so we will need the latitude and longitude again. So you're just going to scroll through until you see that beacon, which I am there now. So I'm going to pull this back up. And so I'm going to uncomment that line. And yes, I'll use the iGate symbol. That makes sense. Or the DigiPeter symbol. And the latitude and longitude, I'm going to go ahead and just put that in there again as is. So I'm going to do 37.781 and the longitude is going to be negative 84.321 
and then we're going to save finally. So I'm going to hit Control X, Shift Y, Enter. Next slide, we're going to be installing RTLSGR library. So this is the application that will allow us to feed data from our RTLSDR or frequency into Direwolf so it can listen to the packets. So we've already updated, but I will go ahead and just throw that in there because it can't hurt. I would be surprised if it needs to update something, but um, I'll go ahead and pull this up some so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. And I'll go ahead and start um, copy and pasting the lines just as we did for the installation for Direwolf. One by one, that's all it takes. Uh, so here with that one, you see it's asking a question up here. Do you want to continue? We're going to do shift yes for a capital Y, hit enter. So once that command's done, we'll issue the CD and then we will go ahead and download the RTL SDR library. And then we will change directory into that. And then we will make our build directory. And then we'll go into that build directory we just created. And we will run our CMake command. Might take just a moment. And then we will run our make command, which may also take a moment. So once that's finished, we'll do our su sudo make install. And finally, we will uh, run the sudo ld config. And that's pretty much all the hard parts finished. So the next thing we're going to do is set up a radio. So I live in the U.S., so there are different fre uh, there are different frequencies for different places for APRS. I live in the U.S., so my frequency is 144.390. So I'm going to go ahead and just take my radio and plug that in. And something's breaking the squelch on my cheap foul thing. So that's interesting. So... My, my frequency is in. The next thing you're going to do is enable box. That way when audio does come through the radio, um, it will transmit. And we also need to connect the audio cable from... No, let's just go ahead and... We also need to connect the audio cable from our radio into our Raspberry Pi. So I'm just going to go ahead and connect one end here. And I'm going to connect the other end into my Pi. It only goes in one place. Unfortunately, I can't move my webcam. So that is connected. And we also need to take our RTL SDR. And if your antenna is not connected already, Go ahead and connect that. So I'm going to go ahead and just plug that in. And I'm going to plug it into one of the USB ports on the Pi. So, every, all the hardwire is ready to go. The hardware. So the next thing we have to do is um, run Direwolf, and we should be up and running. Wolf. So um, what we need to do is actually just go ahead and navigate to the Direwolf folder within the Raspberry Pi. If you don't know how to do that, you're going to do C. Uh, you're going to type CD for change directory, and then the little squiggly line, and uh, basic little basic Linux commands. LS Enter will show you all the folders and files in where you're currently at. So we're trying to get into direwolf, which we see is lowercase. So we're gonna do CD space direwolf. And that will pop us right in the direwolf folder. And then I'm gonna do LS again, just to show you guys exactly what we're looking at here. So we see a lot of um, 
files and folders, one of which is going to be our direwolf.conf file that we edited earlier. So the next thing we're going to do just to get this thing up and running is you'll see the following command here. Um, RT, so what this does is it starts direwolf, the input being our RTL SDR, and it tells it to use our direwolf.configuration file with this, this sample rate. Okay, so I'm going to paste that in. And when we hit enter, direwolf will be running. So I'm going to hit enter. And as long as you don't see any red messages, you should be good to go. So uh, we're now connected. Uh, and there's a red message. Let's see what's going on with that. Error reading from iGate server. There we go. Must have been some weird internet issue. So uh, it looks like that might be a beacon to APRS.IS. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that up <clears throat> and see if we can't find ourselves on the map. And actually, here we are. That is how you set up your iGate. So uh, at this point, as long as Direwolf is running, uh, our RTL SDR with the help of the antenna will listen for radio packets and of course we'll deploy this and if you have an outside antenna you would want it you know mounted um, we would deploy this it would listen for packets and if one was to come over and need to be retransmitted our Baofeng's wired into our Raspberry Pi and it would broadcast out over the Baofeng and be transmitted over the air and you have a nice little console readout to see what's going on. And let's see if that's my last slide. Yes, so that pretty much sums it up. Uh, this has been a way to create a budget APRS uh, iGate or Digipeter that can be readily set up available uh, anywhere you need it as long as you have an internet source connection or in power. So you can actually uh, tether the internet from your phone to your Raspberry Pi set this thing up in a place where there's cell service, go hiking or something with your APRS enabled radio, and then use that to GGP packets and get messages out over email and text message into other hams uh, while you're off the grid. Uh, this video took quite a bit longer because I ran into some hiccups I fixed every now and then going through the slides I needed to buffer up. Uh, so I hope you bared with me. I hope you can use this. And um, I just want to say thank you guys so much for, for um, for all your support and, and I'm trying to make these videos as interesting as possible I'm trying not to have too much downtime so anyways I just want to thank you guys uh, there's still some more APRS videos coming along the way and if you're still with me now I'm getting the FT3DR this weekend so I'll be doing an unboxing video so that'll be coming up too but I'm really trying to focus and get some more content out on this channel anyways thank you guys for so much for watching and uh, stay safe out there